Hello everybody, this is Gamergar. Welcome back to another video of Stardew Valley. For today's video, we are going to bring you some amazing tips on how you can quickly and efficiently achieve perfection in this game. So without further ado, let's jump into the video and let's have some fun. So the first thing we're going to talk about is a starting point. Best place to start, especially when you're looking at getting perfection, is with the perfection tracker inside key secret walnut room. Now you can very easily get access to this room if you can obtain a total of 100 golden walnuts around Ginger Island. You don't need to have the golden walnuts on you, you just have to have obtained a total of 100 or more. The perfection tracker will basically list out the areas you need to complete before you can get the title of perfection in this game. As you can see here, there's loads of things you have to do in order to get perfection. Some require immense time. Let's start with the more challenging one, craft all items in the game. This could be very time consuming, but let's talk about some tips you can utilize. So what we have here is a workbench and the workbench is absolutely amazing. You can purchase this off Robin, it's not too expensive at all. And the workbench will use materials that are in adjacent chests, which means you don't have to fill up your inventory with materials all the time to make items in this game. So what I've done is I've placed the chests all around the workbench and each chest will hold a specific type of item. For example, one chest will hold ores, bars and minerals that I get from the caves. Another chest will hold farming items, you know, such as wood and hardwood and stone and things like that. Another chest can store forgeables. Another chest can store fish, for example. So once you have a setup like that, an organized setup, it becomes very easy to craft all these items in the game. The big challenge, however, isn't crafting all the items. The big challenge is finding the recipes to craft all the items in the game because the recipes are spread out over numerous NPCs in this game and also vendors. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the vendors right now and show you what vendors you have to go to to get the crafting recipes that some of you might be missing if you're trying to get perfection. First up, we have Robin. So Robin will sell you multiple tears of braziers. And what a lot of people get stumped about here is that you might buy one blazier and assume that she's nothing else to give you. But Robin will actually get a new brazier recipe every time you purchase one from her. So you basically have to purchase one recipe, leave her inventory, go back in and then purchase the next one. You have to rinse and repeat this until you get the last one, which is the marble brazier. Next up, we have Krobus. Krobus can be accessed via the source. Get into the sores in the source key, you get that from Gunther by giving him artifacts. So Krobus actually has two recipes you need. He has the crystal floor and he has the wicked statue. And you can just buy these off Krobus. You don't you don't need to get his hearts up or anything like that. You can just buy the recipes off him and then make them at your own leisure. So Krobus is another vendor in this game that you have to buy recipes off. Next up we have Pierre at the Halloween event. He will sell you the jack-o'-lantern recipe. And you actually need a pumpkin, you know, to make that. So you do need crops to make some recipes in the game. We also have Pierre at the flower dance and he will sell you the, the top of flowers recipe. And we also have the dwarf here as well. The dwarf will sell you um, some flooring recipes too. He will also sell you a rare crow. And it's worth noting too that you also got a rare crow off Pierre from the Halloween event and also from the flower dance event. You also get two more rare crows off Gunther by giving the artifacts. The reason why you need to collect all the rare crows is because when you have them all, you will get a recipe mailed to you called Deluxe Scarecrow and that is a craft but you need to make that. So as you can see here, most of the events have a unique rare crow that you can get where the other rare crows you get off Gunther. It's also worth noting too that another rare crow can be gotten by the traveling cart lady. It's a snowman rare crow but if you've missed the traveling cart lady, you're guaranteed one here at the, the winter event, the winter fishing event. You can get the snowman rare crow there for just a couple of grand. The more challenging one is the alien rare crow. This is obtained when you gain access to Key's casino. And you can get access to the casino by completing a couple of chain quests. First you need the magnifying glass of course, and you have to find the secret note that will activate that chain quest. So that is the, one of the more challenging rare crows. But it is worth your while to get all these rare crows anyway because the deluxe scarecrow covers twice the range of a regular scarecrow it is absolutely amazing you do need some iridium more to make it but it is worth it 
Next up, let's look at crafting all of the cooking recipes in the game. This can also be very challenging because multiple steps are required to get all of the cooking recipes. But when you have all the recipes obtained, the best way to go about this, in my opinion, is to get mini fridges from Robin and fill up these mini fridges with different types of items you need to cook all the recipes. So one example would be that you would have one fridge designated to just fish. You would have a second fridge designated to farming goods, such as melons or cauliflowers, for example. And a third fridge designated to forageable items, items you pick up off the ground. Then you could have a fourth mini fridge that could hold obscure items, you know, such as sugar or vinegar or items that don't really fit any of the other categories. Utilizing this method, it's much easier to get organized and to make all of these cooking recipes. Now, it may seem like a daunting task, but if you just bring up a list from the wiki in terms of what you need to make all the cooking recipes, the list actually isn't that huge. It's also worth noting too that the biggest challenge isn't acquiring the material to make all the cooking recipes. The biggest challenge is getting all the cooking recipes themselves. One of the more difficult recipes is the tropical curry you get from Gus. So my advice to you is that if you're playing your game, and you see Gus on the beach here, make sure you get the chopped curry recipe off him straight away. Because sometimes you can go almost a whole year without Gus actually going to Ginger Island because it's all pure randomness when Gus decides to actually go there. There is no fixed date or time that he will go there. It's just pure random. You could get lucky, he can go there a lot, or you could play the game for a very long time and he may never go there. So if you do see Gus on the beach, Prioritize that recipe over anything else that you're doing. Next up, let's look at get all the star drops. So the first star drop you will more than likely encounter will be the one inside the regular mines when you get down to floor 100. So this star drop reminds me of subs, of course. So if you are new to the channel or if you enjoy Star Valley content, just hit that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. The next star drop of course can be purchased for 2000 stars and you can get that at the Stardew Valley Fair and this one can be fairly easy too. Just remember to always gamble your, your star tokens on green. I think there's a 75% chance you'll always win on green. So what I normally do is just keep gambling half of my star tokens until I have enough. Next up is the rare seed you can get from the traveling cart merchant and that grows into a sweet gem berry. All you have to do with the sweet gem berry is take it to the secret woods here and just click on the statue with the sweet gem berry in your hand and you will be rewarded with another star drop so this is another easy one because the rare seed isn't too expensive you know and you can get multiple rare seeds from the traveling cart lady every time she becomes available and it's actually very common the traveling cart merchant has a huge rotating stock however the rare seed is one of the more common items that you will find in the merchant's wares and all you have to do is click on the statue here with the sweet gem berry and you will get another fabulous star drop for you. So most of the star drops in this game in my opinion are fairly easy to get. The problem is knowledge, it's knowing what you have to do to get them. Now one of the more challenging star drops of course is getting access to the stores and purchasing off Krobus. See it's all about giving artifacts to Gunther. When Gunther receives so many artifacts he will visit your house and he will give you key to the source. What you then do is go down into the source, talk to Probus, and you can actually buy a star drop off Probus. Now, it's also worth noting too that if you're worried about befriending Probus and losing the opportunity to buy a star drop, it's just a myth. Don't worry about it. You can still get the star drop even if Probus moves into the house with you. What will happen is instead of Probus being there, a chest will be there, and you will simply interact with the chest. And you can buy the star drop so even if you get Krobus to move in with you before buying the star drop you are still guaranteed that star drop all you need is twenty thousand gold that may sound like a lot of money to you but later on in the game that would basically be pennies especially if you're going for things like the warp obelisks and the golden clock twenty thousand gold is all in a half day's work especially if you have cakes in your process and items it would be absolutely no bother to you at all to just stroll down here into the sores and purchase this star drop my advice only purchase this star drop if you can afford it you know if you need that money for something else hold off on that star drop next up this is one of the more challenging star drops you need to donate a total of 95 artifacts and or minerals 
into Gunther. So there's a lot of minerals and artifacts you can get in this game. The best way to go about this is to stock them on Omni Geodes or regular Geodes and just have Clint break them all open. Once you have attained all the minerals in the game via Geodes, trade the rest of them in for treasure caches over at the desert. You can trade in a few Omni Geodes for a treasure cache and you can get Clint to break those open for artifacts. Another challenging star drop is to obtain every fish in the game including the ginger island fish and the legendary fish. This can be quite daunting but there are things you can do to make it a bit easier. The first of course is to enchant your fishing rod with the master enchant. That will give you a plus one level to fishing that will make your fishing bar a little bit bigger. You can also get the iridium rod and that can use bait and tackle. More importantly tackle. Trap bobber is a great tackle to put on your fishing rod as it makes the progress bar go down slower when you're not hovering over the fish. Some fish, especially certain legendary fish, will literally spring all over the place. They are nigh impossible to catch if you don't have a trap bobber. And one of the last star drops that you can get in the game is by getting a certain amount of hearts with your married spouse. Take Maru here for example. Once you have attained 10 hearts, 4 new hearts will unlock. Once you get them up to 12 hearts, they will then award you with a star drop. And this is something that you can get early if you really double down on relationships at the start of the game. You'll actually be very surprised how quickly you can get married in this game, especially if you're quite familiar with loved gifts for all of the NPCs. Certain NPCs are much easier to marry early than other NPCs. Maru, of course, is pretty easy because she loves strawberries. She also loves battery packs. So Mario is quite easy. Emily is another easy candidate because she loves minerals like jades and things like that. And they're very common in the mines. So one of the best ways to befriend NPCs is to stock up on rabbit's foots. So just get rabbits. Now they are expensive but they are so worth it. Get your rabbits. Pet them every single day. The happier they are, the more likely they will cut off their feet just for you. And they will grow their feet back so don't worry about them. In order to get friendship up with the NPCs, you can always get a good crowd in the saloon, especially on a Friday. And everybody loves a rabbit's foot, except one person of course, which is Penny. Beware of Penny. Penny does not like rabbit's foot at all. She does however love prismatic shards. And it's always safe to give everyone a pearl or a golden pumpkin as well. That are fairly common, especially if you start getting those treasure caches and getting Clint to break open those. Um, in terms of Penny, Sandfish, Penny loves Sandfish, you know, um, you can just go to the desert, pull up Sandfish all the time, if you can get a perfect catch on a Sandfish, or if you use a quality bobber, you can even get Iridium Sandfish, you'll have Penny maxed out in no time at all. Other NPCs are very easy too via Gus's regular stock, uh, if I saw spaghetti for example for Robin, a salad for example for Lee, a coffee for example for Harvey, beer will cover you for Shane and Pam. So Gus is the man to go to if you want to stock up on noble gifts. Gus also has a great rotating stock where he will occasionally have really nice recipes that one if not two NPCs will absolutely love. Now you can also give Penny poppies as well but Sandfish is also another great way to go if you want to get hearts up with Penny very quickly. So let's talk about ship all items in the game. This one can be quite difficult because what's required here is a great deal of knowledge on items. So it's not just one egg, for example, that will do the job. You need to get a regular white egg, a regular brown egg, a large white egg, a large brown egg. So that, they're the kind of things you have to take into consideration. Some items can be very obscure. For example, a green tea, a coffee bean, you know, best thing to do is to just open up the wiki, pull up the guide and look at the pictures of the items you need. What stumps a lot of people actually, what I find is the caviar you need from the sturgeons. Because that's the only fish in the game where you can make caviar from. But you will also need a second fish bond to make regular aged roe. But any aged roe will do the job. So in order to pull off the achievement, you will need two fish ponds or just one fish pond and just rotate the fish out of it either start with the sturgeon once you make the caviar just take that out put in some other fish make aged row and you'll be done then with the fish ponds uh, another super easy way to get this achievement done is to just go to keys secret walnut room uh, spend a few key gems 
get Pierre's missing stock list that would unlock his entire stock regardless of what season you're in and just purchase one of each crop that he has go to the desert trader you know purchase the crops that you know sandy has in the desert and you're more or less good to go go to ginger island just get the few crops you need there you'll have this done in no time at all the bulk of this achievement comes from the crops but also remember that you have to take into account the forgeries you pick up off the ground as well so this even though there's a lot of items you have to ship in the game it's actually not too bad once you have a list so i'm going to leave the video there and i really hope you enjoyed it if you have subscribed to the channel yet hit that subscribe button for more gamer car content i hope you have a fabulous week i wish you a merry christmas and i'll see you in the next video bye for now